So our goal is simple. Intense research. Uh, incorrect assessments on things because it is three and a half minutes of a 45 hour video game. But I did want to check it out. I also have the Japanese one up. We're going to watch the English one first. Uh, but I do have a Japanese one uh, that also is subtitled. Uh, that way we could uh, observe um, certain aspects of the script, seeing if there are any uh, any any ch any changes and stuff. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna dive into it. We're still here at the scene of this terrible disaster, caused by a massive tornado which swept through sectors zero, one, and two. Amidst the wreckage of the expressway, search and rescue operations are already in progress. Did do you think, like, Red 13 is gonna, like... Do you think, like, normal human paramedics help him out? Do, do they, like, take him to the pound? Like, is... I'm asking some important questions here. Uh, just him being on the stretcher is really good. Big fan. Anyway, I, there's a lot of theory crafting about what this scene... Uh, what this scene is meant to convey. I mean, the easy one, I feel like, is the one I was thinking of, of just... Th this could be, uh, what Zack's side of the game is experiencing. I don't want to give it a term. Given how chaotic things were at the end of intermission, where he's going into a church and everyone's crying or freaking out. I'm like, maybe this is... What happens when Cloud is not involved with this group. Or it's, they get they get as far as um they get as far as the tower and escaping, but then a tornado fucking nails them. Anyway, that's that's about the best I got on that. Yeah, the Zackverse, the one that has a different dog mascot. Wow. Uh, this is after Just they get out of Vault you know, 101. It's so green. Even after everything we've done to it, it's still going strong. It may look that way, but in reality, it's barely hanging on. Was wondering. Man, just look at just looking at this. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. I bet I can get like a cursor on this, probably, so you can see you can see me doing shit. Let me see here. But but ah, hold up, hold up. It is now gone. There it is. There it is. Sorry about that, chat. The source the source disappeared for a second. There we go. Looking at the detail a little bit, um, I'm pretty I'm pretty impressed with how like detailed this looks. They're really proud of the fact that we can just have flowers and trees and overgrowth and all that stuff. Really good. This is bit crushed to hell. Also, a bit of a nightmare. See the like the pipes and stuff coming out of it. Some people are noticing some of the land masses look similar to like the overworld map stuff too from the original. Dream. What's Cloud been doing these past five years? Where's he been? And God, stuff like this is gonna make it extra pop. The fact that they can add like fog, and 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 other stuff around some of these areas just really give it a nice, a really nice mood. I wonder if they're gonna do like time of day stuff in this, where it'll naturally go if they have a day or night cycle, or if they're just doing it based on the story stuff. Be interesting what they want to do with that. You're asking me this. This is gonna sound crazy, but you get to see the uh, see I mean, the Chocobo Ranch. Cloud I like that cool. everyone um everyone can like explore on their own here. We also have like various commands. We got sprint. We can dismount. Then you have scent and scour. So I, my my expectation, I guess, is that the 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 Chocobos will be able to help you find things, extra items, maybe alternate paths, secrets. Feel like some of that stuff can be in there. Scent is also a really good reference to to Kingdom Hearts Rebirth Rebirth. A little bit of that. The life stream. Then we get Bugenhagen. It is the very essence of our Cosmo star. Canyon. The blood coursing through its planetary veins. According to Hoda, uh, and then we get this. I actually don't know which location. Oh, they're connected to this Sephiroth. necessarily is. I don't know if this is supposed to be like the mithril mines or if this is like below, below Cosmo Canyon. Actually, I was trying to remember which. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's closer to that, based on how they presented the mithril, mithril mines. Looks to be the place you meet up with Elena. Oh yeah, also that. 
we got some more overworld exploration. Additionally, call Chocobo. So once we do the Chocobo quest, it looks like at any time we just have access to it on a button as we continue. So you're going to get that like pretty early on, I guess, given given how close it was to Midgar in the original. Sephiroth was in Midgar. We fought him. Yeah, we got a meeting in Calm here. He's alive. But why come back now? After five years, doing who knows what. Trailer's about to start well, kicking up. I think we woke it up. Angered it more like. So we got this like rock elemental here in like the uh, the mithril mines, and what has me the most excited is that it's only Barrett and Red 13 in this location, and it has me starting to think that they're going to make the party split up while on the journey, so that you have these sections of, you do this entire dungeon with Barrett and Red 13, and then you're going to have Cloud, Tifa, and Aerith doing something else, because the strength of, like, FF7 Remake, in my opinion, was they curate who you use. It's not a thing of, oh, I'm going to mix and match my favorites. I, d I feel like the game will generally be better. If you split them up because it forces them to have more dynamics, uh, much in the way of Final Fantasy XIII, a fantastic game. That story is better because they got to keep giving you different combos of characters and interactions. It's like how you, uh, near the end of FS7 Remake, you just do that, um, you do that boss fight predominantly with Barrett and, uh, Aerith against the big machine man. Makes it a lot more unique when you're doing it like uh, doing it like that. on the Turks' latest and greatest, Elena. She may be new, but she's still a Turk. I love just looking at the back, the background of some of this place. If I can frame by frame it back a little bit, just seeing, just seeing like the uh, the fucked up buildings and stuff inside this cave look pretty good. There's also the gameplay thing. I pointed this out when we watched the stream yesterday. Yeah, like the canyon slums or whatever. Uh, I pointed out that uh, right here, Cloud's got his normal UI of health, ATB, MP limit bar, but there are now pips down here. I have no idea what these are, and until they say what they are, my brain wants to think those are those are also some. Maybe they're like a bankable ATB of some sort. Maybe it's a point system for your team attacks potentially, because it's like you have one ATB. You got a little bit of you got a little bit building up down here, but one of these has also been used. And then for her, she's Tifa's missing like three of those, so maybe you can bank a bunch and then you can cash them out. Maybe it's kind of like sub tanks in Mega Man X. Anytime you have like extra, it just fills into those. Uh, but I feel like now that they're going to be able to do these big team related attacks, I don't think they'll be tied to limit. Feel like they could be tied to a new resource. Potentially. Because they showed a lot of them in this trailer. Uh, additionally, also down here, there's a little materia on the command menu thing right there. It's hard to see because of the video player line, but it is there. That, I'm very interested in, like, why there's a why there's one there. Maybe, the red, maybe because it's red, it summons, potentially. Maybe it's letting you know that you have a summon there. Maybe it glows when the summon's, like, ready. Maybe they do something like that. But they show the usual phase transition in the middle of the boss fight type of stuff. We get to get to see a little bit of uh, cool environments. We're just we're just big chilling. Aerith's doing some like playful little like uh, idle animation down there. This part gets me every time. This combo is absurd. Bro is, bro is mashing for his fucking life over there. We also got this, this, this perfect shot of heading to Junon Harbor. Yeah, it looks like they're giving, they're upgrading Punisher mode a good bit. They definitely need to flesh a lot of this combat, combat out after uh, starting with a new one. But we got the cannon up here. We're battling near there. We get to finally see some level of, of, of Red 13 stuff here. He has a, he has his own specialized uh, triangle mode. They're calling it Vengeance Mode. Which I'm, I'm really excited to see how that one how that one works. It'd be really funny. It's also Punisher. You just press a button and he 
dog bite parries. Or, I'm sorry, lab rat dog parries. Uh, nothing new on the UI. It's still about the, about the same stuff. Uh, something I noticed in the map up here, if we go before this cut, is they have, like, a new icon up there for a point. I'm guessing that you can pin stuff on the map. To be like, I want to I wanna remember to go to this spot, which is neat. We get a bunch of team attacks here, like Tifa being in the dome. These two doing, like, speedster slash attacks. This Barrett Cloud one that looks real good. Hmm, something I do want to check on some of these here. Okay, so something I just noticed. If we look at the UI, you'll see health, ATB, those pips. Uh, the, ma uh, the magic, the limit, and you'll see the limit's kind of empty here, and it's got like one notch to the left because it's building. The notch has moved to the far right now. So can you bank two limit? Is that why that's there? And this is filling up the second one? It's a very easy to miss type of thing, I feel like, too, where it's like people aren't necessarily going to immediately see that. I only just now noticed it. But yeah, that's interesting. And you can also see even better here, Barrett's got that thing and is slowly building the next one. So, they, they, they can have both elements, like, right there. Away from me. They say she's a monster. That she can peer inside you, into the very depths of your soul. <laughs> Genova always be doing this. So they show what uh this right here, which is kind of like the parry material, like dodge. Those you hate. That Those thing that hate. most players did not do unless they Those started fighting hate. Weiss in the DLC. Three, yeah, yeah. You murdered my dad. You burned my village. <laughs> You know that I killed her. So, who is she? Yeah, overall, it's just a really good trailer. Re really fantastic. And then, of course, early 2024 on two discs. Uh, reminder, uh, a PS5 disc is 100 gigs. This could be a 200 gigabyte video game. That's really, that's really sick. Yeah, this is how you do a re-reveal, absolutely. Uh, thanks to that one person you always see on Twitter doing translations, they subbed the Japanese trailer, so I'll be checking that out. I credit them, but they're on the screen also. We're gonna do a watch of the subs to look for any potential differences, because I only know about the one toward the end. That's okay, you probably just have a bad memory. I'm sure it's fine. Also, I recall this, this is uh, supposed to be Reeve talking about Sephiroth. I believe someone was saying that yesterday. I, I did not recognize his voice. Rufus, okay, sorry. Alright. Thank you. It's It's been a minute, and he's not in a lot of 7 Remake. This thing is drawing from natural energy. Seems like we woke it up. So, yeah, the English version just has the second line. Meanwhile, this one's like, the natural energy of the mine awakens this thing. <laughs> we 
We have to add a yo. That's that's how you know Rude isn't white. Alright, so we're seeing a lot of the same stuff here. We're, of course, seeing the limit bar extension thing I was pointing out earlier again. These are always interesting. I remember the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers had to entirely recreate the gameplay for those. So it was always fun to watch the Japanese and the English. Because they would have entirely different camera angles as they try to generally approximate what the other trailer's gameplay was supposed to look like. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna roll this back since dialogue's about to come in again. Yeah, the Japanese script is entirely different from that last scene, at least in terms of trying to make it way more direct what they're talking about. Because immediately, a lot of people were having, you know, general, um... They're having general theories about, oh, there's some ambiguity in who he's talking about. And then immediately in this line, he he just is like, no, no, it's Tifa. It's not, it's not any other, any other person I killed. Uh, really interested in in that. He's clearly trying to go. You know, what if, based on how the trailer is conveying it, like what if um, what if Tifa is an imposter and is in fact, uh, like this weird alien <laughs> that's just taking the shape based on. Based on your shut the fuck up about Among Us. I'm so tired of you, you little prick, you bony bastard. <laughs> Clearly, they're going for some type of angle here. Tifa clearly being important. With with you know without Tifa, a Cloud in the original does not get out of his funk. But even more so, I feel like Sephiroth's going even, even, even higher than that, where he wants him in the, uh, he wants Cloud in the best condition possible. They don't, he isn't, doesn't seem like he would necessarily want him to have a mind break in this one. Yeah, there is a potential that the, uh, the cloak Cloud we see is from the Zack aspect of things, where it's like, yeah, he didn't really... He didn't have the support system of his friends, and he kind of just degraded. It could be a misdirection. Yeah, it could be that. But then there'd be nothing to talk about. Uh, I like this thing, because I'm kind of looking at it. It only has, like, one arm. I wonder if you'll be able to, like, break apart, uh... I wonder if you'll be able to break apart pieces of this thing, or if it's just going to be a, a one-armed boss. You can kind of see, like, pieces of rock just, like, rolling rolling off-screen and stuff, so I wonder if they, they'll they want to do something uh, cool with this boss, make it a bit more, uh, a bit more destructible. Why would Zack abandon Cloud in that timeline? We've already seen that he's effectively done it already. <laughs> Given we didn't see Cloud at all in the, uh, in the intermissions post-credits. They can do a lot of things. Until shown otherwise, I wouldn't doubt the fact that, uh, that they might make it so that, uh... Sid or Vincent don't have much going on in Rebirth so that they can say... So they can have another bullet point for part three to have more playable characters in it. I wouldn't be shocked if that ends up happening. They have the freedom to move around events and do different things with it, so I could totally see them going. 
In Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you get the additional party members of Red 13 and Yuffie. And then in the third one, they get to go. Now Sid and Vincent come in to complete the set. And, and then, of course, Sephiroth when you team up to fight Genesis. Namora already said no more DLC until the trilogy is over. That that makes sense. I could have seen them doing a little thing as a stopgap, but I also think they really want to go into overdrive for the third one of getting it out faster than it took to get from Remake to Rebirth, which was already a fairly fine and sober dev cycle we're looking at. But I could I could totally I could totally see them going. No, we need to we, we we just need to get this out. You know, we want like a good cadence here for all of these. It helps when you get to reuse most of the assets and you just have to add on to the character. Even when they make like even when they jump from like a Kingdom Hearts 3 to a 4, they're like we need to re we want to reinvent aspects of the wheel here. With this, they're not necessarily doing that. They're just continuing to add more things onto it. Refining other aspects. I have really great news, chat. We had an entire conversation about all the party members we could add. I did, in fact, forget about Kate Sith. Fuck him! <laughs> I thought you were ignoring him. No, I completely forgot. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's that character who, who, who slammed their fist during... During the, the, during the 9-11 of FF7 remake, when the plate fell, he's like, damn, I completely forgot. It would be really funny if he just isn't playable at all. We fought him. We'd get a new level of, uh, a new level of discourse if they don't understand the soul of Final Fantasy VII. I can't play as the worst party member in the game. After five years, doing who knows what. What about Roche? Dude, Roche could be anywhere. I think we will get up. Bro could be anywhere at any time. He'll just sneak up on you. Roche is the first boss. Yo, but what if he's the final boss? The most exciting part of uh, of this section here is me thinking about how good the Turks battle theme is in FF7R, and if they do a rearrangement for that, I will probably something something this comes. Mad libs of of things I would say if something was good. But there's plenty of things they haven't shown yet from early areas that are uh, worth being excited about, like yeah the. Uh, the Midgar, uh, Sormer. Because I can see that being a multi-phase epic, you know, snake boss fight. Yeah, Gold Saucer type stuff. What potential mini-games they have there. I can't wait for an interview where they ask, are there gonna be any mini-games and stuff? And Namor will go, please be excited, I love Blitzball. I love Costa del Sol Hojo because we got to we got to do this thing where people went I wonder if they're gonna put in the cloud in the dress for fucking five years and now we get to move on to I can't wait for them to put Hojo in the beach <laughs> we get one of those each game I'm so surprised they didn't bring up Gold Saucer at all in this one Honestly, yeah, yeah, I was, it was a bit surprising, but they also still have plenty of time, you know. Their advertisement campaign isn't about allegedly hiding 90% of their game, so. I can see a Tokyo Game Show thing that is a mix of plot stuff and some levity style stuff. I can see them being like, you can race your chocobos, uh, uh, uh snowboarding because they should they do they do in fact show the snowy mountains in one of these shots coming out like right there they could do some of that it may look that way do some snowboarding or something you could do maybe they make new mini games as well i mean they're not opposed to that we had darts and uh remake 
I've been doing these past five years. We know this goes to Cosmo Canyon, at least. I'm betting the meat of this game is going to be Red 13 and Barrett's arcs. Yeah, I'm really interested in seeing Barrett's arc complete and he gets his uh, rival fight. I'm also really interested in the refinements to Barrett's gameplay. Um, the, the, the most Riz that man had uh, was, I, I guess, canceling animations to shoot a little faster or you put a melee weapon on his gun. So I'm interested in seeing some changes there. Also, I think Barrett's VA is one of the better ones we have in the whole remake thing, so I'm excited to see him do more, uh, do some of the more emotional character-driving moments. Whatever happened, he's alive. But why come back now? Uh, also, the game looks absurd. Uh, it feels really great that we're getting two mainline Final Fantasies, uh, within 12 months of each other, and I'm ignoring, I'm ignoring the 14 stuff, um, because that's also happening. But we're getting two of these that are, like, current-gen only and look really good. Square kind of had a reputation of making games that look fantastic. Um, but I feel like some some parts of 15 didn't look the best, particularly the way their mouths moved because it made me go insane. Uh, it feels good that they have, like, two games coming out fairly soon that look better than most video games ever have, you know? Cool Rock. Dude, The Rock fucking rule. all right? The Rock ruled. The Epic Mealtime guy hugged his little baby child, Hajime Tabata. Y you mean next gen, right? Of course not. It's current gen only. We're almost on the three-year anniversary of the console. I'm sorry, PS4 ain't real anymore. Anytime someone's like, PS5 doesn't have any games, I'm like, any game that launches on both, the one on the PS4 ain't real. Because it runs like shit. <laughs> or looks bad. I've never felt more confident in this stance by saying that FF15 on PS4 ain't real. Because it doesn't run the way the PS5 one does for me. Also, the loading is cut by like two thirds. Like, I was kind of shocked how fast it loads now. They didn't even patch that shit. You're fine and you should say it. I will continue to fucking say it. Fucking, fucking, who cares about that door texture? Except the haters. I did like that comment that Yoshida made in regards to, uh, Grape Gate in Endwalker, in which some grapes looked bad, and he said, we just allocated a lot more budget to the grapes in our next game. Amidst the wreckage of the expressway, search and rescue operations are already in progress. Yeah, there's a lot of... A lot of interesting stuff in this to, like, chew on. Like, way more than I was, uh, kind of expecting. Nice! Wonder what the 15, 14 producer, uh, wow. thought of his comment on the grapes. It it's so green. You know, I do wonder. My favorite, my, okay, the one bit, there's a lot of Yoshida stuff that's really bad and annoying and kind of makes me roll my eyes. But that part where someone asked him if there would be a 14 collaboration, he's like, I gotta get back with, um, the guys in charge of that to find out. All right, I've talked to them. I feel like we can probably get something going. Those guys being just him again. I love bits like that. As far as I know, Cloud was never in Nibelheim five years ago. Another thing I'm interested in is like some of the different markers and what they could end up meaning and stuff. We got we got a purple circle one. We got the questy one here. We got a shield one that also has like a, a navigation arrow there. I wonder if because it's yellow, it's specifically a chocobo thing you could do. Maybe the arrow there is trying to denote that that location will lead to a spot where a context-sensitive chocobo jump you can do. Kind of like when FF10, you would, like, use them to jump over gaps in, like, the Calm Lands or, uh, Meehan High Road, for example. Anyway, I'm gonna bury this. I'm gonna bury this. Uh, this little little nugget in here, just just uh, because it, it is of interest to me. Uh, uh, a po a poster who leaks a shit ton of stuff on Reset Era uh, recently had their uh, made their asked for their account to be deleted because uh, they continued to leak as so many new things to the degree that they leaked a Final Fantasy X remake is gonna happen in a, in a couple of years. Uh, I wanted to say my stance now. Uh, the remaster looks like shit. You can totally do that. Go ahead. 
it's my fa it's one of my favorite games of all time so if you're gonna get a get a version of that that looks a little bit better on there go ahead I don't know who's doing it I don't know what's going on with it but uh sure why not sure why not one of my one of my favorites ever go ahead Uh, specifically, they are timing it so that it can come out for the 25th anniversary of that game. Which, they'll tend to want to. FF10 is one of the best-selling, uh, entries in the entire series. If it's something where they touched up the visuals, uh, quite a bit, uh, by having Square make the models this time. Not a remaster studio. Trying to take the easy way out and not making any of the characters emote in any cutscenes. If we can do that, we're all good. I don't care. Go for it, man. In the end, I'll, I'll always have a way to play the original PS2 one. But I would I would really like when people are getting into it in a modern context for, for me to not be that guy that goes, uh, your only option sucks. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to try and avoid that, so... Yeah, this would be my Persona 3 Reload. Uh, I'm a little less ravenous about it than you are for P3P, though to be fair, P3P is significantly fucking worse than Final Fantasy X HD. They're like, we have no cutscenes. We have text that explains the cutscenes that happen. This dude jumped off a bridge. Instead of a visual of it, we will say in the narration that it happened. What did Atlas mean by this? We're still here at the yeah, I don't really, I don't really mind a remake of anything. I mean, I don't even, I don't even hold Final Fantasy IX in a very high regard, but I'm still like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, bro. People love that, people love that game, and you can fix the parts of FF9 that I think suck. In this shot, where's Barrett's tattoos? Hold on. Does he not? Huh. You're gonna, you're gonna make me, like, look up. You're gonna make me look it up. Dude, this could be something. This could... This could be a hint of something, or it could be that shit of... Why is Terra's Keyblade a little different? Clearly, this will lead to something. Let me see if I can enhance here. Okay, I've got I've got his render over here, just just for you know, for the sake of the for the sake of the video. Hold on, I do not have OBS open. There it is. Hold on. We're, we're moving we're moving a lot of shit around here. There we go. So his model always has this on his left arm in terms of uh, in terms of trying to match it, yeah, it would absolutely have to be there. There's nothing that would have been would have been obscuring it. So yeah, yeah. There's definitely some. There is some level of we're fucking shit, fucking shit around here. Like they would not remove a tattoo from a model. This is this is significantly more, significantly more sussy, than what we got for uh, say the Kingdom Hearts Remind DLC, where it's like, why is Terra's Keyblade the weaker one? But we saw him using the bigger one and other stuff. This, it's like, you burned it into the skin. There's clearly something going on here. I imagine it's related to the Zack stuff. Zero, one, Zack's uh, perspective or universe that we've already seen is different in ways. Was already showing differences. The mascot, the dog mascot that they had in FF7 Remake in his universe is slightly different. So I can totally see them going, all right, yeah, it's it's not, there are going to be differences. Dude doesn't have a tattoo. I can see them doing some shit. <laughs> It'd be really funny if they just go, yeah, that character's eye color's different too. <laughs> I can see them do, doing some some aspects to be like, hey, if you look, you can you can see the Zack Snyder cut. Dude, if they just went, you yeah, know, for Zack's perspective, um, the game is in four by three. <laughs> In in Zach in Zach's section of the game, uh, not only is it in four by three, it's the only part of the game that runs at one twenty. <laughs> because we chop we chopped out the sides 
We can we can do a we can do a hell of a lot more. We can have the audio going here. According Cut down to some of the background. At a Dutch angle in black and white. I'm gonna be honest. I, I do think Zack Snyder doing that was kind of a Chad move personally. But then again, I didn't watch any of his movies uh, except for 300. So uh, he can't hurt me. Why come back now? How goes the uh, casnalysis? Well, I'm doing some heavy anal right now, and and what we've found is a couple of details. What do you think about the disc conspiracy theories? I don't want to... Personally, I do not think it's going to go as deep on it, I feel like, as, as other people are going, where it's like you're, you're jumping timelines and sw swapping discs and stuff. I don't feel like people are going to do that. I don't feel like they want to do that, necessarily. Yeah, my prediction is it's going to be like they did last time, which is... You're going to get two discs, and the first one is 100 gigs of critical install. Which, honestly... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and do something like that. It still makes you go, yeah, the game's, the game's fucking huge, dude. My prediction is that, it, that we're going to freak out when it's, like, January, and they're like... Uh, the file size has been revealed as 187 gigabytes on digital. She's a monster. That she can then the cowards will go, they should have compressed it more. And then I'm like, make it bigger. <laughs> make my whole system one game. I'll do it. I'll keep playing it. Yeah, I'm, ve I'm very excited to see how that goes. I just don't think they're going to go extra crazy with, like, you put in the Zack disc. You put in the cloud disc. Because I feel like they're... Things are a lot less wacky nowadays. Um, which is, you know, which is unfortunate in itself. But I just, I don't necessarily see them doing here. that. Let's try and add variety to the stream. I will now just play the Japanese one on loop. Um, they, you know, they can make the world quirky. But I, I, I feel like they're, they're mainly just going... Yeah, we just we just need more than one disc. And I think I think they understand their audience to a degree that they do not want to ship a game that goes, Alright, here's your game. There's nothing on this disc. If I recall the Jedi game didn't really have much on the disc and you had to install the entire game. Uh many games have been doing this. Uh Hell, Alan Wake 2 isn't having a physical game. That's a triple A, one of the big best looking visual games of the year and you cannot buy that game physically it is only a digital product so it's nice to see some pushback in a way of people going yeah we'll eat the cost and just put two discs on this it's not a big deal we'll do that and you're seeing a, a, another minor form of it i guess with um ff16 with them going yeah we're not really working on a day one patch at all we polished the game so we'll just you don't you can you can play it out of the box and not worry about oh man i need the critical things that are going to have the rest of the rest of the car on it in the end uh, recent ff stuff hasn't really needed major patches except for 15 really like 7 remake came out was great and then they're like all right here's the ps5 stuff I'm like, all right, that's great. We're good. Is there a 4K trailer for Alan Wake? Probably. I'm not too interested in it besides I know it's a series that has languished and uh, was a thing that I believe Microsoft owned. And these guys had to, like, fight to get it back. And then they finally got it back and then they got funding to make the new one. Anyway, this is, this is gonna be really peak because I'm super fucking excited for FF16. That's coming out in less than a couple of weeks here, and, and then I, I get to ride through that, and then we got the rest of the year's games, which there are plenty of things that I'm excited for, and uh, and during these months we're gonna get more trailers for this, and I think that's what's really good about it. Is the 16 demo out yet? No, that they're gonna drop that in like two days. They're doing a launch event live stream, 
And it seems like that's the perfect environment to go. And now, the demo. You can get started, the game's close, that kind of thing. We're probably gonna do something like that. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff if you're excited for Square stuff that's just coming up. We got FF16 this month. Then we've, uh, we got potential trailers for this. There's a Dragon Quest Three remake that, uh, we still don't know about. There's the Final Fantasy IX remake that is absolutely real. There's the Final Fantasy Tactics remaster that is absolutely real. Allegedly, there's an FF10 remake. There's a Final Fantasy XIV expansion that's gonna start revving up soon. Uh, and that's just a lot of their bigger stuff. They're gonna have a bunch of smaller titles and stuff. Absolutely. And then, you know, that's just one company. Then you got plenty of other games that are coming out around throughout the year. Like, I'm super excited for Spider-Man, for example. Uh, Dragon Quest XII is still in development, but who knows how long that's going to take. I I don't follow development of those super closely. But yeah, we also have stuff like Armored Core 6. We've got, you know, uh, Exo Primal. I'm interested in trying out. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Uh, Persona 3 Remake... Um, uh, leaking and existing also, if we could talk a little bit about that. Um, auto confirms the brand new Jet Set Radio game. <laughs> because they leaked together months ago. So one of them confirms the other. Which I think is, re I, I think it's really funny when that happens. It's like the fucking leak package deal. Also, they're going to be adding more stuff to, uh, to Sonic Frontiers through DLC. And we have a new Sonic game that, uh, <laughs> that is seemingly very good. Apparently, we're going to have a better idea from it, because it sounds like it's playable at Summer Game Fest. Given the fact that I saw the, saw the like, video feed of, like, the demo title screen. Christian Whitehead said it was good, and T-Lopes was, uh, <laughs> was, was very excited about it. So I'm like, all of the, all of the warriors are giving their blessing. Also, what's his name, uh... Ian Flynn made a made a funny tweet in regards to it. One of one of one of those uh, teasy type of tweets. I'm guessing he's going to be doing some sort of writing collab, maybe some prequel comic stuff to that game or something. Either way, it looks really looks really cool. Yeah, he did that knowing smile shit that he always did uh, when trying to promote Sonic Frontiers, and I'm like, whatever, dude, you. Uh, you care about these characters, uh, whereas, uh, the, all the previous writers did not. So that's fucking, that's great. Really, the redemption arc was completed by them just putting out one game I liked. Uh, but if they can get a good 2D one there, this will be great, because then the Sonic fan base has to find something new to be upset about. Uh, currently, they're upset that the game is $60. <laughs> I think I saw someone literally go upset that they didn't see a familiar zone in the trailer and I went I'm gonna kill you I'm gonna get you motherfuckers be like where's chemical plan like I'm gonna fucking shoot you in the head I'm at the bargaining stage where I'm like oh, could you like pick palm tree panic I guess <laughs> when I'm like if you're gonna bring back an old zone can you pick like an old one dude Guys, we need Green Hill back. I will always think about the skill up review in which he's not a Sonic fan. He's like, yeah, this aesthetic of this open world's like a little boring. I think what people really want is to explore Chemical Plant and Green Hill Zone. And I'm like, no, we don't! We do not! He doesn't know, which is why I can't get mad at it. It's in a similar way that every single time he talks about Pokemon, I'm like, that's wrong. That's wrong. And that's wrong. <laughs> You, you, you played some of these 20 years ago, played the new one, it wasn't wasn't that great, and then you became very dramatic about it. Anyway, to get back to the source here, uh, Episode 7 Rebirth looks great. Uh, the rest of the year looks great for games. Uh, and early next year is going to look even better because there's the potential that a remake for Persona 3 and this game right here drop within one month of each other. It, which, it's ridiculous. Both are early. And, what's even better for people like me who are perpetually poor and have to shill for donations to pay my rent, Persona 3 Reload is going to be on Game Pass! <laughs> they finally got a, what I would consider, a killer app 
third party on that thing. Where it's just like, hey, if you have that membership, thank you, thank you, Phil Sama. Thank you, dude. I don't know how you would be able to edit together a video, probably, that instead it's just the clip of Phil going, we won. <laughs> I will say the argument of, like, he's not able to, like, get, he, he's not able to get uh, any Final Fantasy or Square titles that, that matter on, on Xbox anymore, so he has just pivoted to getting Persona. Not to say it's going to be off the other platform, but there is a value proposition of, if I go to that other one, I don't have to pay an extra cost for the game. And that's kind of, like, huge. But also it makes sense. Atlas is owned by Sega. Sega has always had a major footprint in Xbox. Uh, some of the games that mattered the most that people thought about in regards to Xbox, at least when I was younger, was they have Shenmue 2 and Jet Set Radio and stuff like that. It's like, hey, they, they have, like, a lot of some of the Sega stuff that I associate. A lot of people a lot of people tried to call the original Xbox the Dreamcast 2. For example. Uh, oh man, is that a Fidel Games Cage tweet? <laughs> All the tweet says we won. Hold on. Let, let, let me let me uh let me let me check out what this fucking let me check out what this tweet says. Oh, he played it. Oh, we're in. We're so in, then. We're, we're, so, we're so fucking back, baby. If Fidel Games Cage says we won after playing it, I think we're good. He may be a hype beast, but he's played every bad Sonic game. I came into his stream going, I just played Sonic in the Secret Rings and I want to kill myself. And he's like, dude, even I can't get with that shit. <laughs> that shit sucks. Also, yeah, the control layout similar, so I can see why they do that. Yeah, I, I trust Fidel quite a bit. He's, he's a cool guy. There, you, you can always you can always pick out someone who's like passionate about a thing for like the passion and excitement they have, or they're doing it to grab that bag. You know, they're doing that to get that ad rev. Uh, as someone who was a part of the Kingdom Hearts three hype cycle. It was very easy for me to pick out natural, unnatural fake shit. Also, yeah, you definitely can't be a hype beast for Sonic to the bag. But yeah, a lot of pe a lot of people have this general opinion where if someone is positive enough, they're like, oh, well, clearly they're blinded. And I'm like, no, that's just, you know, that's never, never like true. That's why I try to elaborate at least a little bit when I like something just to be like, uh, here's some of the reasons that I'm enjoying this thing. Anyway, yeah, I, I happen to notice some people when, you know, once once Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, you know, uh, that they were major hype beasts uh, suddenly changed their tune. Uh, even 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 some because they did not get a free copy of it. <laughs> so so it's very easy for me to pick out hype beast and find some genuineness in it. Uh, one, it was very transparent. Two, it's, it's very obvious. There's some people that are genuine, some that are not. Fidel Games Cage is uh, up there with other people I would associate, like, um, Rest in Peace Etika, where it's like, M man's just excited and enjoying the jubilation of life. Etika was the goat. I will never forgive the way some people talked about him toward the end. But, you know, it is what it is. I made an edit for when you stream Street Fighter. For some reason, Imager tagged it as not safe for work. Alright, I will check it in a minute here. Anyway, we're going to cut this. This is like a 50-minute little section of a stream talking about FF7 Remake. And then the rest of the stuff of the year, which I'm feeling pretty, pretty great. So, we'll go ahead and do that.